Up next, we have uh, Just a Jolt introducing uh, Team Tropicana Thunder and Axe um, with their with their uh, teams uh, going forward for the next half an hour. And we we actually formed uh, on the on the way up to the first ever um, Battle of Britain. There was five guys in a truck. We decided we needed a theme, and it just so happens that we all had tropical shirts. So we are now Tropicana Thunder. And why all the tropical shirts? Is it is it because down south, like up north, the weather's normally quite bad? Is it really that tropical down in London? Is that why? No, it's tactical camouflage. Tactical camouflage. I like it. I like it. And so, and, and, and so what you, jungle. that is phenomenal. I need you to repeat that last bit because there is a severe echo going on right here that I need to re resolve somehow. But oh, okay. so I, I said, is it have you ever seen a tiger in the jungle? I have never seen a tiger in the jungle, which that is that is an absolutely amazing point. Brilliant. That is absolutely phenomenal. So Nerf Shack. What is your role then within within Team Tropicana? Because, because when you think about teams, you think about some people who are like scouty potatoes, some people who are tanky potatoes, some people who are maybe a uh, standard of salty sort of potatoes. What is your role within top, Team Tropicana? And can you tell me something about your loadout as well? Uh, yeah, we, we don't really have roles as such in Tropicana. We all, we all muck in and we all do exactly the same thing everybody does. But... One thing that I'm I'm pretty good at is the modifying, and I so I I consider myself the armorer. As the armorer of Tropicana. I like yeah. that. That rhymes as well. That's pretty cool. Yeah. <laughs> that kind of. Um, but we all play a major part in in Tropicana. Uh, there's it, not one of us is considered to be the main person. We all do exactly the same thing. Uh, we all organise. We all get together. We all basically just have fun. And that is the whole ethos of Tropicana. Absolutely. And isn't that just what Nerf is all about? And that's what and that's what yeah. being part of the Nerf team is all about. That's phenomenal. Um, what was it? And and it, and you guys have some kind of a slogan that goes along with that as well. Do we? Do you? I don't know. Do you? <laughs> just... not, that's, that's what I'm asking you. I don't know. No, I don't no, know no, 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 no. It's the first I've heard of it. <laughs> So no, it's a, no, no, it's no we, slogan, we but you do have a tradition. You do have a tradition, and that is whenever you get together to Nerf, afterwards you guys go somewhere. Is that not true? Oh, oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, we go to a, a, a local chicken joint. Yeah, a local chicken, chicken joint. joint. Absolutely yeah. phenomenal. Brilliant. <laughs> right. KFC, well, that... to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> Superb. What's your favourite thing to get at KFC? Out of interest. Uh, mine, personally, mine is a twister. A twister. You can't beat the twister. That's absolutely phenomenal. Oh. Fantastic. I'm just I'm just having a look over now to the uh, to the uh, uh, chats here just to make sure I'm not missing anything there. Uh, Nerf Shack makes all my strifes. There you go from Hailfire York right there. Hailfire York, <laughs> of course, uh, of course, being the um, the kind of Australian hat toting member of your team. And what else? Have we got oh, potatoes to quote to, to quote Robotron. Sorry, do you have something to say about Hailfire York? There, do you want to give Hailfire York a shout out? Uh, Hellfire York is, uh, yeah, Ryan, he's our um, he's our skirmisher for FFS. He makes a lot of trouble with the strife for all of the HPA boys. And he's very, very good at it. And that is a phenomenally important part of any team because it is simply impossible nowadays, especially if you're out in a big field, to get anywhere with all those HPA guys sniping you out. Brilliant. OK, so I'm now going to turn my attention to Team Axe right there. And I, and I see that I, I see there the flag Axe. We're going to come back to Team Tropicana's uh, uh, stuff in the background there in a second. But I see Team Axe and I see Clegged. So why Team Axe? How did Team Axe start? What's it all about? Why? Why Axes? Why Axes? Could it be anything to do with the uh, war? Slightly. <laughs> yeah, to be fair. Yeah. Uh, when it started, um, I kind of really like the uh easygoing team rivalry side of nerf because it's all about having fun it's not about the serious competitive side so i wanted my own team because i'm more about a certain aesthetic and um me and sewers were talking about what what name we should go for and uh we should one just go axe big character letters axe simple and uh that's what we want i like axes so we're called that's axe. what you 
And that's what you came up with. And I've got to say, that's really interesting talking about like asserting aesthetic, because um, I guess I guess lots of people nerf for different reasons, don't they? I mean, I mean, personally, I, I, I know for a couple of reasons. I love running around like a mad thing, trying to tag other people while being tagged. I get a kick out of that. I also get a kick out of just just being around people and and, and, and the events and things and organizing stuff with old man nerf. In, in in secret he's the guy that does all the organizing well, that's not a secret he's just he's just amazing old man nerf's incredible but and so we all nerf for different reasons and so for you is the aesthetic part quite like a big deal there is it is it, is it is it all about the dressing up and the cosplay and the and the looking absolutely amazing which can i just say you do if i was if Thank i was you. to walk down the street i would call the imperium and ask them why they're not doing their job right <laughs> I mean, you say dressing up, but this is how I normally look. So it's not really, this is just day, day for me, so. phenomenal. Absolutely. Yeah. But yeah, I, I do like to, to really go with the fun as much as possible. So uh, with my blasters, with how I dress when I play, it's all about uh, just having the most fun I can. And now, that's the, I... the spirit of Axe. And, and, and you were just talking about blasters now. If that's how you look, how do your blasters look? Have you got any of your kit right there that we can maybe see? I know that later on there's going to be a member of Axe doing doing something about shields, but have That's you got me, any yeah. kit that you can currently show um, without, I without hand, yeah, my, away I have later? my current blaster, which is my rainbow pistol, which shoots megas. Absolutely phenomenal. Look at that. I'm just looking down yeah. at this other screen there. That is fantastic. <laughs> that is super. So, uh, what I currently use because I love megas. Um, I've got to say, uh, I've, I've kind of got into Megas recently. I was never bothered about Megas, but then funnily enough, I fired a Centurion and I was just kind of, it was just fun. It was just fun, you know, and it's, yeah, it's a yeah. Centurion of all things, for goodness sake. Just the high Brilliant. calibre. Yeah. Uh, most of my mods just generally don't work because I, I work very jankily with things. So I do have a few uh, better I'm, looking glasses. I'm disgusted glasses, that you work jankily. Up. I'm absolutely disgusted. <laughs> that, that just shouldn't be allowed. <laughs> No. I do also have to hand my shield, which goes along with my rainbow pistol, which uh, has seen a, a fair number of years of use and is retired now. And you need to and and just to, and just to say again, this is going to be something that's talked about later on. And so shields and nerf yeah. is a bit of a hot topic. And I know it grew up nerf. We have conversations about about use of shields in games and the rules around them. But later on, there's going to be some conversation about that. And these guys are just phenomenal at that. Right. I'm now going to move back to Team Tropicana because I happen to see also there is a, there is a, in the back of Nerf Shack's video there there is a there is a nice there is a nice kind of item of clothing which uh, which which I think there's some conversation to be had about. Can you talk us through the item of clothing back there? What is it? Is it a what what is it? What is that clothing? Well, that's actually my old Mark One Tropicana shirt. I'm old Mark wearing... One. Yeah, I'm wearing the Mark Two now. So there's the Mark Two. Um, but the oh, I, I'm one. just going to ask if you could stand on a chair to right, okay, and so you've got the Tropicana's got smaller and there's more camouflage, so so it's more tactical yeah. basically. Do you know what I, I I I thought there was something there, but because of the background it was on, I wasn't actually certain. So I'm glad you moved it just to confirm, because otherwise I'm I'm, I'm fairly certain actually. Look at that! There's the Mark II uh, with foam vest, superb. <laughs> Had to be done. Absolutely wonderful. And who designed that? Where did that come from? Well, this this one, uh, the first one I designed and I got printed. Um, but we sent, we we looked at the iterations and we looked at what we needed for our second shirt, mm -hmm. and we went to our de our design member, who actually, if we were the eight team, he would be face because he's handsome. Super, um, super. He also he also will remain remain nameless because he's a closet nerfer. Um, a closet he, nerfer, right? Okay. Yeah. Okay. yeah. <laughs> He he designed this shirt. He got it all printed, uh, and they are they are phenomenal. They're, mine is actually padded on the top, and I've got padded elbows. His is padded with elbows as well, and there, I think the rest of the team just went for standard the standard size shirts. Uh, but they're really nice. They're comfortable. They're lightweight, and they're just great. And I think and I think you're talking about the padded shoulders. That maybe highlights one of the differences, say, between you and Team Axe, because um, because whereas Team Axe. Uh, they are competitive, especially with that shield action, but they but they like the aesthetic. Whereas you guys have gone for something that's really really practical. So do you guys find yourselves kind of rolling around a bit more and needing to use them, those pads. Well, we, it, it's a fair few of us that to do go to uh, FFS uh, quite a lot. And if you've ever been to FFS, or for those of you who who want to go, 
do go. It's brilliant. And so, and so just for those who are watching and don't know what that stands for, that's Foam Flinging Skirmish. And if you guys live in the Bristol area, you guys need to go there. Absolutely. Absolutely. But the, we, we roll around on the floor a lot. We, generally, we fall over a lot there because uh, <laughs> it's very muddy. Uh, but it's, uh, it's good fun and it keeps us, keeps us going. But our, it's, not, it's not about protection, really. And it's not about being hurt by the darts because you generally don't. It's just more for style points, to be fair. Absolutely. And style points, incredibly important in Nerf. Incredibly important. If you can do a 360 no scope, do you know what? Who needs Fortnite, <laughs> quite frankly? Who needs Fortnite? Yeah. Uh, how far York? How far York? Later, <laughs> later on today, later on in this very section here, uh, we're actually um, going to be going to be giving you guys a chance to have a little bit of competition live. We've got some magic going on here with these with these cameras, and so and so we're going to have a little competition live. But the but the first thing I want to do is is I'm going to give you one minute to say why you are the best. And I know we don't do Nerf to be the best, but I want you to play along with it. Why are you the best team in the UK? And I'm going to let Axe go first on this, because I've got a feeling he's going to beat me down if I don't. Pretty much. I had my Axe ready here, actually. To come at you. Basically, Axe is the best because we're the only melee slash woodworking tool based nerf team in the uk <laughs> and of course we're also kind of international our members uh quite that spread quite around me. even That's in the right. uk and sailors is in denmark so uh we've got uh, the whole world to pull from for our talent pool uh and yeah i mean no one else is this green you want some of this come over to axe i'm actually i'm actually and, and, and that really is unique because because um uh, melee and nerf at the moment is a bit of a is a bit of a thing we're kind of in the process of introducing it here in the uk in the states and australia they just do it whereas here we're very cautious because we don't want anyone getting mm. eyes poked out and stuff yeah right i so. love that i love having a unique selling point and i love the idea of being able to run around and just kind of you know poke someone in the back or something to get them out it's it's wonderful mm. absolutely brilliant i know you can say bang bang but if you can do it with an axe that is just so much cooler <laughs> okay melee based team tropicana why are you the best nerf team in the uk why because we are it's as simple as that it, we were the first we are the best we've always been the best people and there's something to say about being the are. first absolutely well, Every, everybody knows good. team yeah. tropicana Every, everybody knows team tropicana whether you like us or whether you don't like us well, we I'm... don't care is that <laughs> <laughs> because you are team tropicana Absolutely, and i'm going to be yeah. quite frank with you as well you've got you've got quite a long reach um axis axis kind of international they they're kind of splattered like like around europe and uh, and in the uk but in many ways they're quite localized whereas you guys have spread out there are members of team tropicana that crop up in nerf events down south who crop up in nerf yeah. events that grew up nerf who crop up absolutely everywhere so you guys are kind of in the process they're of taking spread. over it looks like we are we are very we are quite widespread. We have some very very fantastic players. Um, we we are we are just us. We are Tropicana. You can't beat Tropicana. You just can't unless, beat Tropicana. Unless it's with a really great big stick, uh, <laughs> or kind of or kind of throw some KFC kind of in the opposite direction to the to the kind oh, of we're, uh, yeah. We're all over it. Kind of yeah, all over that. Yeah, definitely. Okay. <laughs> Right. Well, well, well. Now we're going to move on, and we're going to kind of have a bit of an accuracy competition uh, here. Um, I just need to uh, grab something uh, very, very quickly, which hopefully I can find. What I would like you guys to do, please, is is I would like you guys to get yourselves ready, get your favourite blaster loaded up. Team Axe, you can use your axe, and then you guys, in a couple of seconds, are going to attempt a, a, a kind of a target shoot off in the shonky shed right here, right now through the magic of cameras okay so get yourselves loaded up i want to see team axe please limbering up a little bit and kind of getting yourself ready to throw you know surely there's some warming up i'm absolutely serious get something ready to go okay if you if you want to use your mega blaster as well you can that's fine i just need a second as well Ugh. i would just like to say these guys were not expecting this and so I'm kind of putting it on the last minute, but hopefully they'll rise to the occasion. Where's my... Uh...
How many darts do we need? Uh, while you guys are just standing around looking for things, I'd like to announce there's a, an additional raffle prize that I've made. So we're going towards the raffles, which is a foam fest oh. shield. So if you want to be in a chance of winning this, make sure you uh, donate to the raffle. That is an absolutely phenomenal amount to make. So uh, yeah, go ahead and can maybe win this. And that is absolutely gorgeous. Look at that. A foam oh. fest shield. So if you guys, if you guys like, you know, shields, then that is a shield that you need. Archer, it's nice to finally meet you too. We've tried before. Madge Mod, great to see you. Okay, so are you guys ready? Yeah. Right. I think we'll I think we'll start off maybe with uh, with Axe going first. Axe, what I want you yeah. to do, please, is I would like you to uh, to launch, if you don't mind, your axe. At any of the targets over there, all right? If you don't mind. All right, ready when you are. Ready? Count me down. Yep. Three, two, one, go. Oh, that was terrible. That was absolutely sorry. awful. I'm, I'm really sorry. <laughs> you, you, you bounced off that. You bounced off that girder up there. You are going to get another try, but you bounced off that girder. All right. Yeah. So I'm really, really sorry. Like that, was awful. that was absolutely awful. Right. Okay. Nerf Shack representing Team Tropicana, are you ready? Count me down. Three, two, one. <laughs> I'm sorry, nothing, nothing went down there either. I'm going to give you both one more try. <laughs> you both get one more try. I'd like you to go and recover your, your, your axe, and I'd like Team Tropicana to get themselves, you know, just make sure that blast is all loaded up, okay? Ready? I'm gonna. I'm, I'll get the axe for you. One second. I'll get the axe for you. <laughs> there we go. There's your axe. Do you want to just take it if I pass it through the camera? You ready? Yeah, yeah go for it. There you go. That's amazing. Perfect. Thank you. Fantastic. All right. Okay. This time, in the interest of fairness, we are going to reverse the order that we do this. Uh, Nerf Shack. All right. You're going to go first this time. You ready? Yeah. Ready. Okay. Ready then. Count me down. Three, two, one. That was genuinely a little better. And I'm also impressed with the spread of that. That was absolutely incredible. Very, very impressed. So at the moment, we're going to say that Nerf Shack is definitely winning this. Uh, Team Axe, you've got, some, you've got some doing to do here. You've got some doing to do. Okay, you ready? Count me down. Yeah, I'm ready. Three, two, one. <laughs> I have to say, Team Team Tropicana, I'm really, really sorry. But the most damage there was definitely done with uh, with the axe from Team Axe. So on this occasion, I'm going to declare Team Axe the winners. <laughs> Um, Team Axe, have you got anything to say apart from throwing that Axe gang sign, which I loved? Have you got anything to say, or is there anything that needs saying to Team Tropicana right now? I think it's just a business as usual for them and us. Yeah, it's just how it usually goes. So. <laughs> usual. They're I love used it. to it. I love it. Absolutely superb. Okay, Team Tropicana. Um, obviously, there is going to be some minor disappointment. I was very impressed. You managed to hit quite a few targets there with your one shot, which was brilliant. What would you like to say to Axe? Um, obviously, it's going to be a while before there's another Nerf war. But what would you like to say as a little, as a little kind of, you know, as a as a little message to your to, to your rivals here? No pun intended. <laughs> uh, good shot, and we'll see you on the field. See you on the field. Absolutely. When coronavirus ends, yeah, I would just absolutely. like to absolutely when all this when all this is over. Isn't this awful, by the way, not being able to Nerf? At least we've got kind of cameras and things yeah. like that. Right. I'd just like to take this opportunity to announce um, before we before we do one more thing that the, the, the there are raffle prizes to be won. And so you need, need, need to be donating your raffle money. Um, also, I just want to demonstrate that I'm serious about this. Do you know what I found? I went out jogging and I do this thing called wombling, which is basically where I um, go go out jogging and anything I see that is uh, just lying around on the floor. It's obviously been thrown away. 
if I think it can be used for something, I go and grab it. My garden's just full. Look, look, I, I went out running this morning and you see that fake grass on the ground there. Knocked on the door, social distance, stayed back. Do you mind if I have that grass? Nope. Anyway, I found these scissors. All right. And I'm 100 percent serious about the haircutting thing. And just to prove this, just to demonstrate this. All right. We're at we're at 17,000 now. All right. If you get to 19, no, 1900 pounds, right? 1900, zero, zero, all right? I am going to be using these and these, wherever the other ones are gone. Oh, I was just using them to chop some wire up back there to give myself a haircut, all right? So if we get to 1900 pounds, I will here and now, standing here in the shonky shed, give myself a bit of a snip. So that's one thing to say, right? We've only got five minutes left. So here's what I think we ought to do, all right? I am now, we're, we're done with firing at targets. Now we're gonna have Team Axe, all right, and Team Tropicana shoot at each other. So Team Axe and Team Tropicana are gonna be shooting at each other. We're gonna have Team Axe firing from left to right, Team Tropicana firing from right to left. You are gonna be the sole representatives <laughs> of your people. <laughs> All right. And whoever's controlling the camera, which camera it is, it's going to be your job to, 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 to get this and make it look dramatic. OK, it's going to be absolutely phenomenal, though. We are going to give these guys a couple of minutes to get warmed up and limbered up. So first of all, <laughs> uh, Clegg, we're going to do this true WWF style. Uh, if we could please have uh, Team Axe. I'm going to go into WWF mode now. Team Axe, do you have anything to say? Be 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 super aggressive. You know, not that you know, those American wrestlers are all like, who we do, who we do, who we do, who we do. Some of that. No. That's <laughs> Shaq. Well, you better watch that. No, Shaq, do you have anything to say about that? I, I, I didn't catch any of that, to be fair. I didn't hear any of it. I think his, uh, his goblin mask might be obscuring his voice. Don't, don't tell T-Max, but I didn't either. I'm really sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's have another blast from the past. T-Max, ready! Ready! Team Tropicana! Ready! You will go Ready? on my second whistle. Three! You could both just go on whatever whistle. Three! <laughs> two, I'm sorry, I'm not being racist, Poem Dark Thunder. That's just what they used to do on TV on that show. <laughs> Three, two, one! Go, go, go! That's right, aim the other way. They're now, Thank they're now firing at each other. We were meant to see that on the camera. <laughs> Whoever's changing the cameras <laughs> over, we wanted to see it. That was, oh, I don't know. Okay. For, those, for the benefit of those of you who didn't see what happened, um, I just witnessed such a terrible, ter terrible view of carnage that it wasn't fit to be broadcast on Twitch. Um, <laughs> both did so well. I was really impressed. And if you are not yet mem a member of a Nerf team within the UK, if you are new to Nerf and haven't yet found somewhere to Nerf, then you can do much, much worse than just dropping Team Tropicana or Axaline or any other of the fine Nerf teams in the UK. Please find your local Nerf event and just go there and Nerf as soon as coronavirus stops. In the meantime, please, please, please watch all of the stuff. Watch all of this. Learn how to modify stuff. Um, if you if you watch my channel, you will learn how to modify stuff incredibly professionally. I make gorgeous looking blasters almost as good <laughs> as Hogmaster. I really don't, but that doesn't matter. Anyway, so yeah, before we finish, I just want to ask um, Team Axe, what are your platforms that you're on and where should people go if they're interested in finding out more about you and your gobliny orky goodness? Where I mean, we're all going. All the usual ones, Facebook, Instagram, uh, that's where you'll find us, Axe Nerf. Search for that, find our logo, drop us a message. So Facebook, you go to Facebook, you'll find out about Axe Nerf. Just search for Axe Nerf, is that correct? Axe Nerf? That's correct, yep. Axe Nerf, fantastic. And finally, um, Team Tropicana, I mean, like, 
really you just go to kind of you know any kfc and and and, and you just kind of <laughs> there probably but if, if people want to do more than just join in with you know eating in the same place as you are where should they go where should they go to find out more about team tropicana and how to become involved especially if you're in the london area by the way uh, again it's the same same platforms the facebook we're on instagram we have a YouTube channel, uh, Tropicana Thunder Nerf. Um, yeah, so all of those. We have some. We don't have any serious videos to go out on YouTube because we don't take ourselves seriously. Oh, all, oh, all, Nerf! All you you should videos. take yourself seriously. <laughs> you know we don't. <laughs> <laughs> and what I, what I will add, if that's okay, is everyone keeps on about um, as we're we're sponsored by worker we're not oh, it's, i'm actually just about to mention that as well because i just saw that in the background sorry we're, we're not sponsored by worker we have an affiliation with them okay and all right okay so okay. just so everybody knows everything a lot of people in the community already know this but everything we get from worker is distributed amongst the community we don't keep hardly the only thing we have kept is that bottom blasted right there that's it Everything else yeah, we so, have, we've, or we've received, goes back into the community so we can do things for our community and for the Nerf community in, on the whole. And yeah, and so, have supported us doing that. Yeah, absolutely. And so just and I, and I do think it is worth re-emphasizing. Um, this is a this is a hobby where, where 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 we do that, where we do things for each other. And Team Tropicana are a great example about that. Um, and and so. You know, if you if you are one of the you know one of the people who sort of look at Team Tropicana and think, oh, you know, worker and corporate and corporate, no, absolutely not, not. absolutely not. not. No. That's not what Britain Earth's all about. Um, I just want to close up by saying um, thank you very much for for being here, guys. Absolutely phenomenal. I am terrified by the but by, by the carnage I witnessed when you guys <laughs> fought just now, and um, and and so I'm really really looking forward to nerfing with you guys on the battlefield. Probably probably the next battle of Britain, if if and when that happens, because that's when I tend to to see you guys because I don't travel that much because of babies, crazy babies, and um, and I think that we are uh, probably uh, wrapping up round about nowish. So guys, let's uh, let's just get rid of coronavirus and nerf again <laughs> at some point. <laughs> Have fun, guys. Take care. See you later. See you. Next up on um, Phone Fest Live 2020, we join Just a Jolt with uh, Ace Strike Force and uh, Team Fancy Pants uh, Nerf, and I'm sure they'll correct me for getting that wrong. Um, and now we join Jolt in his shonky shed. Jolt! What's this? Mr. T-Rex, what are you doing? Oh my goodness. Sorry guys, just be a second, just be a second. There we go. You just can't, you just can't take that dinosaur anywhere. It's absolutely terrible. All right then, welcome back to uh, another segment. Oh, that never gets old, never gets old. Right, so we've got, we've, we've just had Team Axe and we've also had uh, Team Tropicana with us. Okay, and now, but now we have two completely different teams after that wonderful ad break. By the way, if you get to 1,900 pounds, then I will cut my hair with these rusty scissors. And I'm not even joking. Right, so let's start off with a quick introduction. We will go with the member of Team A Strike Force because I am, um, it, even though I've even though I've met Team A Strike Force, they've been to Grub Nerf, I've been to Battle of Brit Nerf, um, I'm probably the less familiar with them for reasons I'll explain later. So Team A Strike Force, 
introduce yourself, please. Who are you? Who are you as a representative of Team A Strike Force? Hi, guys. I'm Andy. I'm also known as Commander Ace. I basically run the group as a whole. Um, obviously, I've got a team of guys behind us as well. So, um, yeah, basically, in short, uh, we set ourselves out to be kind of like a nerf private army in terms of looks and feel. Um, to say about that, that was the, for the moment, like most part. And we've and we've seen those incredibly impressive adverts as well. Your advert, I absolutely loved because it just looked absolutely incredible. It looked absolutely phenomenal. I loved it. I loved it. And, and, and when I've nerfed with these guys, a Grump nerf, a Battle of Brit nerf, um, it, is, it is phenomenal because you've got these guys, you know, you, you can see the get up right there. You've got this you've got this kind of black ops kind of kind of uniform and then and then guys running around in red capes as well. It is absolutely phenomenal. And in my mind, it is what nerf is all about. It is absolutely brilliant. And we're going to come back to, you know, why you do that, why, why your style is the way it is a little bit later. First of all, though, I'm going to ask uh, the next person along, our representative of Team Fancy Pants, Sturdy Nerfineer, introduce yourself. That was really silly. Introduce yourself and tell us a bit about who you are, and then we'll and then we'll carry on from there. Uh, well, I'm management for Team uh, Fancy Pants Nerf Team, as everyone seems to be getting that wrong today. Uh, I uh, I'm also Sturdy Nerf, going to Sturdy Nerfineer, and also Phil. Um, I. Uh, we're a group of nerfers that, you know, it's, it's more about family and community, uh, where others are more competitive side. Uh, and we uh, have really cool patches. <laughs> they are really, really fancy patches. And there's another thing that you have as well. Yeah, give, me, give, me, yeah. give me a quick second. I'm just going to go and grab one. This is, this is another thing that Team Fancy Pants have. They not only have fancy pants, they also have toilet roll for when the fancy pants fail. I don't know if that's the reason, but, uh, but anyway, they have toilet roll as well. Absolutely brilliant. Um, so I just, I just want to say something. And so the last... Uh, and so the last thing we had, we'd, we had Team Axe and we also had um, a Team Tropicana and two, and two teams that kind of do things a bit differently. And again, we're seeing here two other teams that do things differently. And if you're watching this, I just want to reiterate that this is why Nerf is so brilliant and so glorious. Basically, if you want to Nerf because you want to be competitive, then come and Nerf with us. If you want to nerf because you want to dress up, come and nerf with us. If you want to nerf because you love being around people, love being around your family, come and nerf with us. If you want to nerf because you enjoy organizing spectacular events, come and nerf with us. Whatever your reason, find your local Brit nerf event and come and nerf with us. Right. I'm now going to shift back to uh, Team A Strike Force now. And I want you to talk a little bit about your uniform, your get up, why you look the way you do and how that impacts how you nerf and why you do what you do all right well main premise was um before i got the group set up is i always wanted my own nerf army sad as that sounds who doesn't um, but, <laughs> but um you know yeah, I, I thought it was really important to um have like a uniform or something to sort of like unify us for like do the same sort of thing so we wanted to basically have a little, a little bit of creative freedom of our um our gear and loadouts, but still have a running theme. So went with this whole Ace of Space type of theme. So I thought, right, we need to go in fully tactical. So we're kind of like the expendable. I'll just mass. break you off for a second and just ask you if that has anything whatsoever to do with the song. Motorhead. Well, yeah, I'm a big Motorhead fan, so I <laughs> <laughs> come to play as well. Um, but yeah, so um, the idea was that we'd look kind of like the Expendables, but on a very tight budget. <laughs> I love it. it. I love it. It's kind of like the 1980s, just chewed us up and spat us back out. Absolutely, absolutely, and, and and I think it's absolutely wonderful. And there's something I've got a lot of respect for for you guys, and that's and that's the quality of the events you put on. I mean, to be fair, I've, I've I went to the Battle of Britain Earth last year, and um, that you guys did, and it was absolutely phenomenal. And uh, and and for something that the 80s uh, chewed up and spat out. You guys put on an absolutely amazing event, as well as the fact that you guys just love nerfing, and that's really what it's all about as being part of a nerf team. Um, and so I just want to pay you guys that compliment. You're absolutely superb. And so and, and so how about your gameplay then? What's your role within the team? What what do you do? Um I think I'm kind of like the uh, the PR face of it all. So it's um And a beautiful face just... too. <laughs> oh, stop me <laughs> 
Um, but nah, so um, I think my role is basically just to make sure that we're all doing what we're meant to be doing. Um, I try and boost the morale of the guys. So at times where we're not nerfing and, you know, like things are a bit lower, sort of like throw like a, a meme in the works and I make sure the social media's kept running and stuff. So um, it's a lot like behind the scenes, but sort of still the stage, like other guys. And also my role is to get shot almost every <laughs> single time. Um, we used to do uh, Comic-Con events a lot. And um, the running theme was whoever ran the day, based on firing squad. So obviously, me being the commander, that role is my role. Yeah, we had to stop when one of the guys got an FDL. <laughs> and, well, uh, time. Yeah, he, I, I think he ramped it up to like a full FPS and a full mags worth in my chest. I was like, yeah, let's just get that tradition to. <laughs> Fantastic. Yeah. And so, and so now moving over to Sturdy Nerf and Ear then, you've already said that you're a manager. And so within Nerf games, what would you say your role is? What would you say your, your thing is on the Nerf field? What sort of loadouts do you carry and what do you do? Well, I, I, I vary my loadouts a lot. Uh, I either go really heavy and carry all the mags or wear a tutu and a crossbow. And I've uh, had the privilege of seeing both, actually. Like, like there's... Like, like just walking towards, as in, as in that slow, steady progress, just wearing people down, and 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 just kind of, and just kind of all the fire being focused on you because you're the obvious target, allowing yeah, your team yeah. to press forwards and then and then and then do the damage in the very fancy pants way. And I've also seen the crossbow, which I love, and seen you got kills with it, which is superb. What's your favourite yeah. loadout? What's your favourite blaster at the moment? Favourite, it's got to be heavy uh, with something brushless. Uh, got it on the back of me. Yeah. Uh, not if it shows up. But yeah, uh, that 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 tends to be really effective. Uh, would you? Where they sort of, I think. Go on. Would you? Would you say that the? Uh, would you say that the color of the blaster and the and the style of it adds to the effectiveness on the field and how? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think when you get something really bright and pink, people look at it and immediately think it's a joke blaster uh, when you actually start getting loads of people tagged out with it they uh, soon change their mind about absolutely how it has that kind of super do. impact doesn't it yeah yeah and um, i think that's important it's, it adds to the fun doesn't it can you can you make the sound of that blaster please uh, i haven't got a battery next to me at the no, no, no 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 i mean i, I mean oh, can you make the sound of the blaster oh yeah and when it and when it's firing as well, because because that's obviously very important. When it's firing as well. Yeah. Uh, how does it, how does it sound right. when you pull the trigger? It's uh, a, a strike force. You're going to have to do this in a second as well. So. <laughs> it's a loud thud when it hits things. Uh, and so, so, so would you say it's more of a or or more of a would you say how? This is a serious it's question. More of a, uh, nee, 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 nee. Like a, you know, a, a, a 50cc bike going through nee, the gears. Nee, nee, nee. Okay, okay, I get that. I used to have a fizzy, so is that something I understand? Okay, all right, brilliant. Okay, now onto A Strike Force. And so, what's your favourite loadout at the moment? What do you what do you love to run? Um, well, at the moment, uh, I am a sucker for half darts. Um, if you might have seen the meme war going on, um, one of my guys, Archangel, he's a, a, an avid full data all the way. So in retaliation to that, I have my retaliator. Um, this is the Priestess. Uh, I've got some of a buddy of mine. Um, it's pretty much uh, fully calibrated to run half darts. Um, I think it's pushes at about 100 FPS mark, so obviously not as powerful, but God, it's reliable. Absolutely. And I'm going to ask now, sorry, I was just, I just got a bit distracted by the delay, but by the delay in the thing there. Right. And so, it's, so I've got to ask then. And so you're, and, and so does that mean that you perform more of an assault kind of role within your, within your squad, as it were? Pretty much. Because... Yeah. So we have two main divisions. So we've got technical support. That's uh, the guys. At the that's FBI very also. well organized. Oh, well, <laughs> we're something. All right. Um, so yeah, we have technical support. They run obviously the high 
higher flywheel stuff, the FBLs, Griffins, that sort of thing. Then you've got um, my guys, which is the forward recon division. So that's for the more sort of like uh, Springer types. So the Retaliators, Caliburns, that sort of tech that we want to kind of run. So we're kind of more out on the like, forefront. So we're actually in the pro process of updating our loadout a little bit to kind of reflect that. So attack uh, support, they're going in all black special ops uh, for recon. Black and olive drab. So a I love it. Stealthy. I love it. Very Call of Duty. <laughs> And so now I guess there's a there's an obvious question that's popped into my mind might have occurred to other people, too. Um, and there's also another kind of um, a military sort of style organization within the nerfing world. And that, of course, is a, is is the Caps Regiment, Captain Xavier's uh, Regiment. And so the obvious question to me is who would win in a fight? between a strike force and the regiment. I'm not trying to start anything. I am trying to start things, but I'm not. Who would win in a fight and why? Um, probably the regiment. They're probably a larger force. Um, but as we've found out with history, numbers never win a battle per se. I'd always try and get a bit of alignment in place beforehand. Obviously, we'll send, like, send out an emissary and be like, Let's work together. And if it doesn't work, then uh, we'll go to war. Absolutely. I mean, I mean, it's probably kind of a similar sort of thing to the United States. It's probably a microcosm of the United States and the United Kingdom, as in like, you know, they're all they're all big and stuff. But there are just some things that we can do better because we're British. Can't drink tea like us with British their biscuits. And absolutely. That's just the British thing to do. Yeah. Superb. Right. So so now I'm going to throw the cat among the pigeons to a strike force versus Team Fancy Pants, who would win and why? You both got one minute to try and explain why you would thrash the pants, however fancy, off of the other team and what your reasons are. One minute, we're going to start off with Sturdy Nerf and here, go. Numbers don't count, but at the moment, Fancy Pants is over 50 members, so we're in massive full force. It's one-sided. Uh, plus, do you have custom darts? I don't think so. Full on wedgie darts? No. Absolutely. Well, that's a that's a that's quite a that's quite a challenge there. Team A Strike Force. How do you respond to that? Ooh. Oh, look at that! Look at that! Not phased. <laughs> we deploy. He's getting drunk. He's scared. We do our best work in the shadows. <laughs> We're the last thing you never see. I think it's about time that those are fighting words. So I think that we ought to actually do something about this now. There's been a, there's been a bit of talk. We're going to do something. Now, I allowed the last two teams to fire at my target range back there. All right. And now you guys are going to have to do the same thing. I'm going to give you a couple of moments uh, to load up, OK, to load up whatever weapon you want to. And then you're going to be able to fire something at that target range back there. All right. And I'm going to judge which I think is better. Okay, now, um, Sturdy Nerfineer, have you, have you got something that you could, he's, he's going to be back, all right, okay, so get loaded up, guys, get loaded up. Way out of here. <laughs> I'm back. Okay, and in the meantime, I'm just going to take this opportunity to remind everyone, once I put these earplug things back in so I can hear what you're saying, um, that there is a raffle going on and you should kind of buy tickets because some of the prizes are absolutely awesome. In the words of the youth of 2011, they are bare proper sickage indeed. I'm just going to go and have a quick look at the chat as well. Um, oh, is it beer o'clock, sip, legend? <laughs> uh, Fancy Pants <laughs> also has a, a Jaeger. Is that is that a reference to is that a reference to the old uh, Napoleonic style Jaegers? Um, is it um, including uh, member? You, you, Oh, there, there is indeed a British Auxiliary contingent, and I hope we haven't offended them. Um, right, Donald Trump is fake. Wonderful. Brilliant. They're weird. Oh, yeah, that's right. I'm sorry. Um, a strike force. I never got you to make the noise of your blast right. We need to hear that before you fire it. I'm sorry. That's, that's oh, actually right. quite important, please. I mean, it's kind of hard to describe the sound of death, but uh, <laughs> um, I don't know. I mean... No, no, you need to make the noise. The, the Springer? Yes. This is a serious Harry, question. Um, um, right right from right from the start. So right from the moment that you see a target, you're not primed. You have to make the noise of priming and then firing. This is an important, serious question. 
Okay, uh, so it's kind of go. That was actually really good. That was actually yeah, really good. Okay. <laughs> I, before we do this, I just want to see what a battle between Team Fancy Pants and Team A-Strike Force would sound like. So I would like you, please, to both make your respective noises uh, on the count of five, four, three, two, one. Absolutely terrifying. Absolutely terrifying. OK, I think it's about time now that we that we saw... Uh, what what these guys can do? We're gonna we're gonna let uh, Team Fancy Pants go first, I think, because your pants are fancy. All right, so Team Fancy Pants, I want you to aim at the camera, and then uh, fire. I need you to I need you to count me in. So five, uh, yeah. So count me down from five. Five, four, three, two, one. I'm sorry, you missed. That was terrible. Oh. Absolutely awful. Right. Um, okay, let's have Team A Strike Force now, please. I'd like you to have a go at firing. Okay, there me two, two. Yeah, so just realign the camera real quick. Desk. Yeah, yeah, no problem. And you need to you need to count me down as well. Uh, okay, doc. Okay. Ready? Ready? Yep. Three, two, one. Well, that was a little bit better. I was impressed with the spread right there. That was that was a little bit better. Um, I need you both to do it again, though, please, if you wouldn't mind. So, so get loaded up, get ready to go again. Team Fancy Pants. Okay, count me in when you're ready. Five, four, three, two, one. That was quite impressive. That wasn't too bad. That was a roll of Team Fancy Pants toilet paper. A strike force now, please, if you wouldn't mind. All right, just get me flip up sides up. Three, two, one. Wow. I'm going to be honest with you. I'm going to I'm going to have real trouble uh, telling who won that one. So if you're if you're watching this, I want you to please comment. Who you think should be the winners? We're just going to leave this up to the general public to decide. All the people who have kind of signed into this and who are watching right now, I'd like you to, uh, I'd like you please to um, uh, uh, say who you think should be the winners. Right. Uh, in our in our last couple of minutes together, I would like to just ask. Um, and so, what do you feel that your team brings to the Nerf community? Because obviously, the reason we all do this, the reason we all Nerf, is because we're all part of this wonderful community. What does your team in particular contribute to the community? And in addition to that, how can people find you if they want to become a member of your team or if they want to find out more about you or see what you do? Let's go with team A Strike Force first. Well, I think what we bring is um, kind of like a new flair. Um, so you do see a lot of teams that obviously like sport, kind of like sports type jerseys, which I love, by the way. It's just a really cool different color schemes or iconography. I don't think that we bring. Oh, we've got a little. There we go. Still there. Sounds like we've lost some audio. I'm gonna. I can't hear a strike force now. They've been hacked by team. Uh, by by. Uh, team. Um, fancy pants. So team fancy pants. Could you please carry on? Let's hear from you now. Yeah. Uh, well, we try and help communities out. Uh, our members go out to different locations, games and run games. Uh, we uh, try and educate people the safe way to, you know, assemble blasters because there is a safe way and there's, a, there's a effectively a potentially dangerous way of doing it as well. Uh, but uh, I mean, that's what we do. Uh, and plus, obviously, we fancy, and that's pretty much the most important thing. Phenomenal. And how can people get in touch with you? Which needs uh, to, we're uh, on Facebook. Very, very quickly. Uh, if, uh, if you search Fancy Pants and Earth team on Facebook, you'll find us that way. And is that in Instagram as well? Because I know they're linked. Uh, yeah, we're on Instagram as well. Yeah, Instagram uh, too. Thing. Fantastic. Team A Strike Force. Um, uh, team Fancy <laughs> Pants uh, hacks you. I, I think I think that's yeah. fighting words. And the next time you come across each other, you need to give each other what for. Carry on saying what you're saying. And so and so you said you would, you said you bring flair. Might also be worth talking about the games um, that you do, and yes. and then and then whereabouts you uh, 
nerf as in as, as it not we're about to nerf where can people find you if they want to find you that's right that's what i wanted to say okay cool so we bring kind of like a militaristic edge to the hobby uh, our game days uh, once lockdown does finally recede uh, we'll probably wait until we get the all clear tactic run events. i think we're be- we're witnessing i know what he said i know what he said fancy pants are great Go with them. Yeah, I agree with that. Yeah, that's all true. Yeah, yeah. We'll see you said that, yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, so our game days, they're going to run monthly uh, once everything does get quietened down a little bit. Um, if you do want to follow us, this is what it looks like from behind. Um, but you can also find us on Facebook, it. Instagram. Uh, I think we're on Twitter still as well. We've got a YouTube channel, but we're going to work on some content later in the year, hopefully. So we're on more social media platforms. Oh. And um, for our game days, uh, search for Ace Strike Force Field Ops. That's where you get all the updates for the coming games throughout the year. Phenomenal. Thank you very much. Right. So we're kind of at the end of our segment now, but I, 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 I simply couldn't go without once more hearing the absolutely glorious uh, battle going on. Um, and, so, and, and so I need to hear that just once more, please. Um, if you are if you are watching this, then you are also obligated to pick one of these two sides or make the noises of your favourite blaster, if you wouldn't mind, uh, in the comments. And uh, and I would like to hear that in, in 10 seconds. So you've got 10 seconds to get yourself metaphorically loaded up. If you're watching this, I want to see it in the comments as well, if you wouldn't mind. Um, and I, I'm, this, this battle is going to happen in five, four, three, two, one. He's the only one that's firing. Team Fancy Pants, you're losing. We won it. <laughs> just dodged him. I just Go dodged him off. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, Team Fancy Pants. You got wiped out right there. Okay. And, 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 and Team Ace Strike Force just, just, just wiped you out. Okay. So basically, um, we have a raffle going on. And, and this raffle is an exciting raffle because you can win some absolutely amazing stuff. If you haven't yet found your way to donating some money, and entering into the raffle, please do this. At the moment, we are on 1,765 of our finest um, sterling pounds. And so if we can get up to um, 1,900 pounds, then these rusty scissors, which I found a few days ago whilst out jogging and I and I acquired them and wombled them, I will use these to cut my hair and give myself uh, a, a wonderful haircut. I did actually look and see if I had clippers. I don't, so I'm stuck with these scissors. So if we can get to that value, I am committed, fully committed to using these scissors. And just to show how serious I am, look, I can't, I'm trying to use that as a, look, this is, that's how serious I am. All right. There, there's hair on there. I'm pretty serious. So anyway, um, thank you very much uh, for watching. And we are now going to be uh, blessed with some more wonderful, incredible, adverts or something i don't know what's coming next i've got no idea what's coming next i'm just making stuff up now uh anyway um let's have a little look the team let's go look back at the comments go donate now the team in the middle won um who was the team in the middle a strike force one they're saying uh you can you can also see there in the comments just giving uh dot com slash fundraising slash foam fest live separated with dashes uh we've got honk honk going on and so, uh, and so, yeah, lots of that. I'm seeing lots of noises. Click, thump, whir, fancy that. Vroom. Click, 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 click. I love it. Absolutely phenomenal. You guys are amazing participants. I hope you all win. We are now going to go for an ad break. Pua.
And now on Phone Fest Live 2020, we go to Just a Jolt, who is talking to Loreen uh, and his team and Balls of Duty from here in England. Uh, so here we go with our friends in the Shonky Shed. Just a Jolt! Yes, Mr. T Rex. Wouldn't it be wonderful if we could see what a real. Shed looks like a real studio because yours is a mess. Basically, the Shonky Shed is an absolute mess and it bears no resemblance to exactly what like a real kind of Nerf organizing studio thing place should look like. And so because that's the case, we've decided to get representatives from Balls of Duty and low Rhyme Mechanical Artworks here today to show you what a real studio, how a real nerfing studio thing should look. First of all, I'm going to ask the two gentlemen we've got here with us today to introduce themselves. Can we please go first of all with Captain Redbeard? Uh, yeah, uh, my name is Captain Redbeard. I'm the captain for the Balls of Juicy. Uh, we're based off in Scotland. Uh, two times UK champions with Speedball, held by Foam Dark Thunder. I'm just going to stop you right there. So two times UK champion. So we're talking about like an official competitive Nerf League here. Can you tell us slightly a little bit more about that? That's correct. So from Dark Thunder, they've been holding a league now. Um, it's had three seasons in total. Uh, we joined in the second season. Um, happened to pick up this as well. And so you basically um, just been crashing the OGs. Yeah. Um, Hoping more people will join in to give us a bit more competition, uh, looking at other teams out there. And so Axe, Tropicana, if you guys are listening, you need to up your game and get up there and try and, and, try and compete with them. Definitely. Phenomenal. Okay, and, um, and you say you're up in Scotland, and so what are your regular Nerf events that you go to and attend? So our regular events are pretty much all held by Foam and Dark Thunder. Um, so we'll do... Um, iCombat is one of our favourite ones, um, it's a nice CQB setting, um, obviously Terminal Infections uh, another great event for us to do as well, uh, as well as the stadium events as well. Fantastic, brilliant. And now over to Low Rhyme Mechanical Artworks. So, um, I'd like to know please, um, whereabouts in the world you're from? Obviously you've got the word uh, Rhine in your name, which, which sort of says something. And then also I'd like to know um, where whereabouts your local events are and what you do in Nerf. What do you do? What do you do? Hey, hello. So we are, we are just a uh, preview team. We uh, have planned to do some uh, uh, events before, but they are all shut down uh, because of the shutdown. They're not happened yet, but we keep on uh, moving to events soon. So um, we're not too... Uh, too Often we not participate. Ah, sorry, um, is do you hear me? Sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, okay. It, it kind so, of come, come back again, but I've got you. I heard you say. Um, I heard you say. Uh, you don't do. You don't do too many events and things. But if I look, if I look behind you on your wall, I see what you do do. And so, what's your yeah. contribution to the Nerf community? Yeah, so we we we've been to a lot of events, but not as team. So after see after I've been to I've, we've been to Foam Fest last year, uh, I saw the, a lot of British teams like X and um, Tropicana Sanda and all these teams. So, and I decided to make my our own German team, and it's the first German team to uh, compete with these teams, maybe sometimes or things like that. So that's just uh, we are just a new team. Our jerseys they have not delivered are not delivered yet, sadly. But uh, the whole team will set up soon. I've, and I've seen some pictures of these jerseys as well. I'm just going to take my camera here, and it's back to front. So you guys are going to have to use your imaginations. But here are the jerseys right here. Aren't they absolutely phenomenal? I know we're meant to be talking about um, a workshops here, and we are going to get to that. But aren't those absolutely gorgeous? Absolutely superb. There you go. I'm going to put that back where it back where it goes up there. Okay, then. So, as Mr. T Rex said earlier, the Shonky Shed is a mess, and I'm a terrible example of how to organise a Nerf workshop. However, we've got two people here who organise their workshops absolutely phenomenally. They look gorgeous, and amazing stuff happens there. 
We are going to start off, um, I think, with... Uh, let's go with Low-Rhyme Mechanical Artworks again. I would like to see, please, a little tour of your studio, if you wouldn't mind. Yeah, of course. This is Chris from Low-Rhyme Mechanical Artworks, and this is my workshop. There's kind of a dedicated space for it. That is absolutely phenomenal. How did this happen? How did it reach the point where you had this studio? Where did where did the idea come from, and how did it how did it all happen? Um, I started the hobby in my in my, in the the workroom of my girlfriend in a tiny little corner, and we 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 always thought about getting our own home house. So uh, after like four years of searching, we found this area. This is a nice house, uh, um, like a lot of room for everything, for our dogs, and even this workshop. It was the uh, workshop uh, <laughs> was the best thing for me. It's the best thing ever. Um, yeah, I just had luck. Um, uh, a lot of luck and an absolutely fantastic foresight to do that because I bet that's a real boon for the German nerf community. Whereabouts in Germany are you based, by the way? Where's I'm, the, where's based, the town? I'm based really close to the Dutch border. So mm -hmm. all my friends from the Netherlands knew, know that it, the doors are open for everyone here, the Germans, the, for everyone who wants to join us here. I think that's absolutely wonderful. I'm going to be honest, I think we need more studios like that within, uh, within well, I would love to have one in England. I mean, you know, I, I, I think I need to do, I, I think maybe we need to do that, guys. We need to just take over some building and deck it out. That's absolutely incredible. And yeah, what are the... I made... Sorry, I made it, I made it because of, uh, I saw a lot of uh, meetings where the, even the younger, or especially the younger guys, they don't have tools, they don't have access to tools, they don't know how to paint, they don't have the paint materials. And so I put all in here and they can use it and that's okay. And it's it, it, it it's actually quite a high um, 
quite quite a high barrier barrier of entry sometimes. Like as soon as you start doing doing like flywheel blasters, you start needing soldering irons and solder, and you start needing all of these you know progressively more expensive pieces of equipment. Yeah. And then and then once you start painting, you know it's you know it's one thing to start just you know painting with say. I don't know Warhammer style paints, but then as soon as you start using some more serious paints, start needing ventilators, um, and and maybe even a ventilation chamber, a place to a place to dry the blast. It can get expensive really quickly. So I think that what you're doing there is fantastic. It's really lowering the barrier of entry to other yeah. nerfers, and it's absolutely superb. I've been through RC modeling all my life, so I had tools like soldering irons. I have everything before before I started nerfing. And that's really good for this workshop. So all these things you see on the walls and whatever I had before in one small room in the cellar pushed together one more garage. And I, I, I didn't even have to buy a lot of stuff for this workshop. And, and I think the way that you're sharing it and the way that you're using it to grow the community is absolutely exemplary. That's absolutely fantastic. Like the thing is, I've seen I've seen your work before in person because um, obviously, um, you know, you you know, you've shipped to some people in the UK. And I saw uh, I saw one of Monkey Tron Collective's blasters. Actually, it was a it was it, it was a pistol. I can't remember exactly what it was inside, but I just remember it. Looked absolutely gorgeous. What was it? Yeah, I think it was a Bunko M6 blaster I made for Mel. Right. Right. Yeah, with with uh, with a uh, um, oh, I don't know this. Uh, it's a cut down scope from a, uh, from a, a hawk eye mm -hmm. as as a barrel attachment. Yeah, I think that's the one with some spider net uh, graphics on. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, that, that's right. It had the it had the it had the web on it and stuff. That was absolutely yeah. wonderful. Absolutely brilliant. Superb. Thanks. So, well, <laughs> compliment where it's due, right? Compliments where they're due. And so that's that's going on then at, uh, in Northern Europe, in um, in Germany near the Dutch border. How about Captain Redbeard, Scotland? Can we please see uh, your studio by any chance, if that's possible? Sure can. right there and honestly that's well worth getting a third look if we get a third look no it's stopped that's fine not and not a problem at all absolutely wonderful and so what you said was that 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 kind of process started in 2018 so what made you think that you wanted something that looked like that um it's just been expanding over the last while um we kept making more workbenches uh creating more space for the team to work in uh, then took over two thirds of the living room and was just getting impractical after that. So started looking at new houses. Uh, I found this place with a very large spare room and it was just perfect for setting up a, a workshop. And so it seems like we're seeing within the community then spaces which are being which are becoming dedicated exclusively to working on blasters and uh, and doing things. And I guess and I guess that's kind of what the Shonky Shed is. 
but but you guys have taken it to the point where it's not just kind of a one man effort where you could or a one person effort you could you, you can have a whole team working on them so how many people can you have then um captain redbeard in your in your studio at any one time working would you say comfortably that's a very good question at the moment uh thanks to the lockdown i moved in the day before the lockdown um but comfortably we'll get three people working there's two workbenches as you can see behind me and there's also the workbench with the 3d printers um, i saw that and you can all have 3d printers kind of chunking things out can't you and so 3d printers yeah. making things while you're, while you're yeah they're, things. they're pretty much running 24 7 and have been since we bought them over a year ago now so yeah we're, we're you know quite lucky using them to be able to create our own parts as well which has, has helped a lot and I've, and I've got to ask what's your favorite feature what's your what's your favorite thing about about your studio oh the nerf ball just been able to have everything on display yeah. quick reach is extremely helpful yeah I, yeah absolutely because if, if it's all in boxes you kind of forget what you've got especially yeah. when you get to our age yeah we'll, well. have kids and stuff, yeah <laughs> Baby brain, Mike, you know, you, you know, Mrs. Jolt's excuse is baby brain. My excuse is just I don't have one. And, and, and so I guess the same question then to low rhyme mechanical artwork. So what's your favorite thing about your studio? Mm -hmm. Favorite thing? I know it's I know it's a kind of a big ask because there's a lot you could probably it's say. A, but I'm gonna uh, on the maybe the favorite thing for me is that I don't have to plan events that long as before i don't have to say oh maybe then or then or then. i just can say let's make it to let's do tomorrow or whenever you want and it's always open it's always prepared and that's the best about it i'm, I'm going to be honest i think that's wonderful because because for me i guess whenever i want to do something and before, yeah, I, I, before I had this space it was, it was I kind of kitchen and like and like just be out in the kitchen soldering and that was terrible you know for for mrs jolt because she'd be like but i want to bake something you know and so and, and having a dedicated and even here I, I make a mess and i and i kind of and it, it takes a while to get cleared up but if you've got a space there ready that definitely kind of takes out one of the one of the barriers to doing things doesn't it and i don't one more reason is i don't have to search for anything anymore that's, that's I don't know where yeah, the soldering okay. iron is there. I know where my wires and all this stuff is. So go and grab it, and it's done. I think that's absolutely superb, and that makes and that makes an awful lot of sense. So um, starting off then with Captain Redbeard, what advice would you have uh, for anyone who wants to do something similar to you? What were some of the challenges that you faced in setting up the room the way you have? And, 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 and is there anything that you learned that might benefit somebody who wants to do something like that? Yeah, um, I suppose it's workbenches. You can get them pretty cheap. Uh, we spent a lot of money on buying wood and building our own, which is time consuming. Uh, the metal racks behind them worked perfect. So that, that helped cut costs, even though we spent a lot of money. Um, planning everything out making sure you know where you want to have things so you're not having to move things around constantly um having things set up in certain workstations does help um if you're taking it to the extreme that we have um but even at home just having one small kind of workbench a good kind of set of drawers that you can keep everything tidy makes a hell of a difference yeah absolutely having a dedicated space um and he, it's, and you talked about those racks behind you now are they the same kind of racks that they use in sh in, in shops in stores they are indeed yeah so it's uh, so you didn't, like break in and steal them at night so how did you get them oh my god um, so they're, the they're, they're quite easy to get um there's i, I own a shop so I, I already have a, an account with a shop for things, uh, company so that helps quite a lot um, but you can buy them. Um, I think it was about forty pounds for two sheets, um, and then you just buy different attachments that you want to the different pegs. Or um, I've even got some plastic um, kind of shelving to put um, some of the blasters up onto. Sure. Now going over to a low run. So same question for um, low run mechanical artwork. So what was your? Um, so what challenges do you face as as as, as your? um studio developed i know it's been i know it's taken a bit longer to do but what are some of the things that you could say to someone who wants to do something similar what would what what advice would you have for them um i would advise them to always buy cheap uh used stuff 
it, take, it took me a lot of time to bring all of these furniture together, the tables, the chairs, and all this, all this stuff. Um, but it wasn't affordable to buy it new. You can't do all. Do you have to do? Uh, you have to search for all parts you need, and that saves a lot, lot of money. That's yeah. the most important thing. Uh, other than that, I wouldn't be able to to set this workshop up. Yeah, I think there's a lot to be said for that because as soon as you start looking to buy things brand new, it can be really expensive, can't it? But yeah, I absolutely agree. Actually, can I just can I just go back to Captain Redbeard for a second? Can I just have a look at something on your wall? You a, yeah. was, it, was it was that a was that a, a, a green raven you've got there, or a, a, a an airstrike raven? Is that is is that special? Has that been modified? No, nope, not been modified in any way yet. It's just one of the projects that I'll be working on soon. A little look. Yeah, have a closer look. Yeah. Love, love Ravens. Could you just pass it through the camera for me? Yeah, sure. Okay, thanks. Yeah, I love Ravens. Brilliant. You know that if you um you know that if you take the uh you take the battery door off apparently that that uh you know you can you, you can top load them and I really like that. Here, I'll skip it back to you. One second. There you go. Thanks very much. You're welcome. Thank you very much indeed. Um, just back to Lower Rhine Mechanical Artworks once more. Um, now, uh, I, I, I understand that you've got some kind of a some kind of a raffle prize. Is that is is that the case? Have you donated a raffle prize? Yeah, I've I, I prepared. A Have you made it yet? Made it yet? No, not yet. I didn't find. Oh, yeah. I didn't find any to know. Oh, certainly, you... but maybe. I ran. I ran out of white chronos to do starts of painting. White so chronos. Oh, well, I can find white chronos here somewhere. One second. Give me a second. What What are you going to do with it? Oh, maybe I was. I was surprised you. Oh, okay. All right. Well, look. look, look. I'm going to. I'm going to give you this and then give you a couple of moments. All right. Just. Just. Okay. Just. Here you go. Have you got it? Oh yes. You got it. There we go. Yeah. Fantastic. There we go. So, so now maybe you give me like one or two minutes and uh, I see what I can do. Yeah, sure. And then we can see what you can do. All right. Okay. okay. So I'm back in a minute. Okay, no problem. I'll we'll see you in a, see you in a bit. And and whilst you're away, I just want to go back to I just want to go back to Balls of Duty again, um, because um, basically, uh, you guys you guys are kind of uh, uh, champions. Uh, uh, I understand. So I want you to talk through. Um, how you got to the point of being champions? What do you think's made the difference, and what do you think's given you the edge against the other teams that competed in the championship? Well, for a start, as our, our name suggests, we've got more balls than most other. Um, not only that, as we did say, manage to I say, with a team like Balls of Duty, it sounds like you've got a lot of guts. Yeah, <laughs> we've um, developed a bit of a, a strategy as well. We we kind of talk things out. We work from each event because it's an eight-week league. Um, we, we learn from what the opposition are trying to do. Uh, we try and adapt things and change regularly. Um, we've kind of got our own little nods and things, so we know what moves we're going to try and do in attacks. And, and, it, stuff. Yeah, and it really helped towards the end of the last season as well. It's, it's, it's basically what allowed us to go so far ahead. And what would you say to someone who wants to maybe form their own team to come to uh, compete against you next year? Obviously, they've got no chance of beating you. All right. What would you say to someone who maybe aspired to that? Um, not to be afraid. They might have a good chance of beating us. Um, find people that you, you can gel with, um, that are as competitive as you are as well. Um, try and just have fun as well. Um, you'll learn a lot as you get into it. Uh, we, we started as complete noobs, walked into the game and within three, four weeks developed a strategy and it helped and we won. So it's not impossible for anyone to do it. Can I just ask how you found Nerf then? So it was uh, basically um, our teammate, um, Kelvin, or Koo as he's known, um, his girlfriend had first bought a, a Nerf blaster for him to have in the house. He would always shoot me when I appeared. So next Christmas, she bought another one so we could even it out. Makes perfect we then sense. started looking at Nerf events online, found Home Dark Thunder, and went along to a terminal infection. 
And yeah, we've just been addicted ever since. It all went on from there. Superb. Now, I just want to go back to low-run mechanical artworks and just sort of see what's happened there and see if we've uh, and see, see what we see what we've managed to create. I'm just back from a paid booth. Fantastic. What have you got? Uh, I tried to. Uh, sorry. Uh, oh, oh, life. So, I'm just back from a paint room. Uh huh. So I hope within some minutes I'm not able to do really great uh, changes, but I've tested this. This is my raffle price for this year. Wow, look at that. Phenomenal. Phenomenal. It, it is a, a dipped a Kronos with two different films, like the wood handle and fire on the main body. Um, it has the worker metal T-pole from Foam so Focus. I, I think that that would be an absolutely awesome raffle prize. Absolutely incredible. Now look, just on that it raffle, we are now up to 18, uh, uh, sorry, 18, uh, 1,830 pounds we're up to. 1,830 pounds, all right? And so you stand the chance of winning this if you're in with the raffle. By the way, if we get to 1,900 pounds, all right, then I'm going to cut my hair with the rusty scissors as much as I can. I would like to thank Low Ryan Mechanical Artworks for being here today and also Captain Redbeard of Team Balls of Duty and showing us around their studios, which are much, much tidier than my mess is. Um, I'd like to once more encourage everybody to go buy raffle tickets. And uh, that's pretty much all I've got to say about that. Any final words quickly from Balls of Duty or uh, Captain Redbeard? Uh, Bob, uh, Captain Redbeard, sorry, or, or Laura Mechanical Artworks? Sorry, Brain Burp. Yes, okay. Uh, yeah, just good to see everyone uh, turn up here, and uh, it's great to see the support. As soon as coronavirus is over, let's get over there. Let's get yeah. over there. Brilliant. Yeah. Superb. And now I'm just going to kind of, I'm going to go back and have a quick look at the uh, quick look at the comments. Hilarious, that's me. Now he called it. Superb. Thanks for your participation, by the way. Let's have an ad break.